Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Roll with the Dragon Tattoo. American version movie thoughts. I think I will go into some of the differences between the two movies because I already talked about some of the things that were, you know, compelling about this story overall. I thought it was interesting that the new legal guardian is a bit... I mean, he's repulsive, and you hate his guts, but at the same time, there are these moments where he's kind of nice, and that actually makes him worse in a twisted kind of way, because he rapes her and then turns around and offers her a ride home, you know, and she comes by to bust him, and he's like, I hate how our last meeting ended, and it feels genuine, but what it says to me, and I could be misinterpreting, but what it says to me is he doesn't like what he's doing. And that's very realistic, you know, not everyone who does bad is happy about doing it. And I think the film does a good job of, while it establishes this, it also doesn't make us feel sorry for him as such, you know. <laughs> you might get a little bit of an instinctive, oh, when she pulls out the instrument. And man, did that look nasty. You know, the, the, the one in the Swedish original, I mean, when that happened, yeah, that was bad enough, but this, yowza. But other than that, you do hate him and enjoy seeing her get her revenge over him. But it does make him a more credible character, you know, he is a human being, he's a despicable human being, he does horrible things, but he remains a human being, and I think that's a really good thing and a really important thing. I really liked seeing her legal guardian, you know, when, you know, in the Swedish original, this really isn't spoiling the Swedish one, you just, she just gets the call. You know, he, you're getting a new one, and that's it. I have no idea how the Swedish one fit in so little, and this fit in so much, and yet this feels like it really spends its time, you know... I mean, the sexual abuse of Salander in this movie felt like it took forever, you know? And I realize that's also partially because of how freaking horrible it was, but... It really just, it, it was a trial on the audience, as it should be. <laughs> yeah, anyway. In this one, she actually finds him. And I like that that's, you know, that also establishes... In the Swedish one, I didn't really get the sense that she... Actually, when I watched the Swedish one, I was not entirely clear on if what Bjornam was doing to her had happened to her before, by the previous one, and maybe that's like, you know, he was so upset by it that that's what happened, and then she had to do it again or something. In this one, it's really clear she cares about this guy. You know, I mean, she goes to visit him, and, you know, she... Hey, hey, yeah, that that's kind of... That's how we talk in Scandinavia. That's how we might greet someone. Hi, hi. Anyway... The, you know, she goes in and finds him there on the floor, and it's just, it's devastating. And, I, I mean, I knew what it was. I, I figured it out when I saw her approach the door. I was sitting there thinking, she hasn't heard about her new legal guardian yet. At this time in the story, shouldn't she have, oh, that's going to be, she's going to find him. And, you know, and then she, we see her visit him, and there's this whole thing. It doesn't, it never feels like she just has this, you know, she just wants him rather than Bjornum, you can really tell she feels for this guy. She cares about him. And that makes it, you know, so devastating. Also just that in this film, Salanda, 
she has bad, bad luck with the people she cares about, you know. And I, I thought it was really... One more thing on her former legal guardian. Yes, I'm terrible with names. That he... You know, they're, they're sitting there playing chess near the end of the movie, and she's, like, going... I've been really horrible to you, and I kept bringing you bad news, and... But now I have a friend, no, one you would like, you know, and just... And she goes and buys the jacket. I wasn't entirely clear on if the jacket was just... You know, she had this picture of him, and she, you know, sees, well, this is the kind of jacket he would like. Or, if that was a jacket he was wearing early in the movie, and it got ruined by, I don't know, blood or something. I like that we actually find out in this movie, I'm not sure that was in the Swedish original, Martin meant to miss him, you know. He would have had trouble if he, you know, if he just, if he shot the guy and shot him in the forest, he would have to drag him back. He would have to clean up the blood from the forest. But as it is, it's just, someone shot at him, you know, and that, he might take that as a warning. Or, you know, as, again, as Martin really points out, I guess that is a little Hollywood, that he just goes ahead and explains, nope, I did that because of that, I did that because of that. Anyway, you know, he explains, I wanted you to come here, you know, I, you were investigating me, sooner or later you might have found out, I'm dealing with you now. You know, and his plan was just about perfect, except Lisbeth is not the kind of person who's going to wait about, the, you know, other people might, you know, wait around for the security guard to return to his post so that he could call and Martin would know. But no, she just threw the keys there and, yeah, that was his downfall. And when you see her hunting him down on the motorcycle, I would have driven my car off the road as well. I, I would have panicked. She looked frickin' terrifying. That was, that was, yeah. And I believed her when she told Bjornum that she was absolutely insane. Anyway, you know, near the end of the film, she buys the jacket. You know, it's like, you know, he must be a really good friend. You're, you're paying a lot of money here. She does the the card, you know, she she puts an effort, man, she she cares. And she's driving out there, gets off the motorcycle, about to get up there, and out comes M Mikhail, and then, you know, the female editor, and she's just standing there, and she really, she knows what's going on, you know, and just her eyes, man, it's devastating. And she tosses the jacket in the dumpster, gets on the motorcycle, drives off, the end. Merry friggin' Christmas. Man, that was just... That really got to me, you know. And that is not something that the Swedish movie could have pulled off, because you did not get that kind of emotional attachment and emotional involvement with that Lisbeth. I love the Nomi Rapace. Lisbeth, not quite as much as I used to, but that was still a really great character. But this one is just so far beyond it. And I'm really happy that, you know, I, I see the next one is due to come out in like 2013. I'm glad that they're taking their time with this. You know, I don't know exactly how it was with the Swedish ones, but I think it they might have been like produced around the same time. And I get that they were original miniseries. Originally, it's just supposed to be a miniseries, but Still, it just, this is how you do it, you know, three long films, filmed apart, you know, so you don't have to rush anything, so that nothing is just done, and just done, you know, so that it is crafted, like the book. I thought that it was easier to keep track of the family in this one, and I like the little joke, you know, the in-joke of this family is impossible to keep track of, with Blomqvist pointing that out, you know, when he's talking to Henry, Henrik.
another possible, excuse me, excuse me, Hollywood aspect. This does a little bit, you know, tie things together, and some things are like, wait, what did you just say? And, you know, something sticks in someone's mind, and, you know, how with, you know, the Rebecca case. Oh no, this case surely isn't, you know, this, this, the Rebecca case has nothing to do with this, but then, wait, what was her full name? Oh, this, then the, that might be this person, you know, that was a little Hollywood. I did like how this really went into the, you know, just the grotesque, the brutality of these deaths and mutilations and rapes, you know. It was covered pretty quickly, but it just felt stronger than the Swedish original. And also just, I, I don't know, it just really got to me how this, this is a lot of women, you know, a, a lot of deaths here. I thought that the tension between Martin and Mikhail was really, really good there near the end, you know, when he's basically realized it, you know. He's been at the old guy's house. The old guy was also a much more fun character in this one, you know, in the Swedish one. He's just, yeah, kind of stereotypical, you know, oh, he's crazy and he's got the rifle and everything. In this one, you know, you have the kind of thing, he's actually interesting. Oh, I'm not a hermit, just no one ever shows up. And the, the bit about the most honest, he's the most honest man in Sweden. And then afterwards, you know, he goes to Martin's and it's like, you know, when you first see that house, I don't know, maybe it was just me, just Stellan Skarsgård, house with a lot of like glass walls, it's just flashbacks to House of Glass, just no. Fincher, do not go there. Do, do not leave that where it is. Just, no. But yes, returning to that scene. You know, he's approaching the house. He gets in there and he's like, you know, he finds this locked door. And we're thinking, oh, there's something behind that door, you know. And he, he gets the knife and hides it, you know, just, you know, just in case. And, you know, he finds... The, the place with the rifles, and, you know, he gets back out of there when Martin shows back up, and he's getting away, but Martin, you know, spots him, oh, wait, you just, because he trips, and then he gets back in there, and, you know, it just, the tension of that whole, I don't know, did that sequence last maybe 10 or 20 minutes? It felt like it just, you know, even before he gets captured by Martin, it just really feels like he, yeah, like there's a lot of time where he's, you know, it's just, it's really tense. And, you know, you have the conversation between them and it's like, oh, the rifle is for hunting. And, you know, he, he notices just the camera move and the eye just, oh, there's a knife missing. And he knows what's going on, you know, and he's like, eh, you'd do more, you'd do better with a gun, you know, uh, for hunting. And he grabs a gun, cocks it, and yeah. I... I don't know if there's really anything left to say particularly. I thought it was interesting that this one did bring in Anita relatively early on. You know, I don't know if the hint was too strong. When, when both Harriet and Anita go up the, up the stairs, right, one right after the other, you know, to me that was really clear as day, but I don't know, maybe not everyone picked up on, oh, they're really, they look just about exactly alike, you know, and, but, but yeah, you have the, you know, Mikhail confronts her early on thinking that it's Anita, and, you know, it just doesn't go for, and, and you have the, you know, she's sitting there talking about 
Harriet and she's really talking about herself. And then it's like, you know, there, I don't remember the exact question, but he asks her some question. Maybe it's your father, uh, or uh, what about the, um, the father? And she's like, my father? And she, he's like, no, Harriet's father. You know, it's something like that. Yeah. Hints. I don't know if they were too strong or not. Yeah, I think that... Oh, another thing. The computer stuff, the hacking, much less Hollywoodized, you know? Not the Swedish one with the just type in the owner of the computer's name and the, you know, just connect and that's it and you have full access. No, there's actual, you know, I suppose we don't see her do any actual hacking, but, you know, she uses some electronic devices to do stuff. I don't know what she does. And, you know, I also like that, you know, even the hacker friend there, you know, it still wasn't, you know, there was still some social awkwardness between them. That really worked, I thought. And I really liked, you know, this is going to sound, yeah, I like the sex scenes. I liked her sex scenes. And it's not just because she's freaking hot. She is. But I like that we see that she's taking charge when it's her and Mikhail, you know, that she's on top and she's the one, she initiates it and she's the one, you know, that also just really worked for her to, to character and, you know, the, yeah, that, that really seemed natural to her. It seemed like how that character would have sex, especially with a man. And I liked how we saw the process of her, you know, stealing the money from Venostrom. If I had to say one bad thing, that this really did... I, I thought that Venostrom was kind of obviously a bad guy, you know. When you see the Swedish film, for part of it, I felt like I wasn't entirely sure if... Mikhail was wrong, or what exactly was going on. With this one, the moment you see him on TV, he just, he looks like a snake. He's just, that guy is not honest about whatever he's, you know, whatever he says. He says the sky is blue, the sky is definitely not blue. You know, you, you might look at it, you might think it's blue, the sky is not blue, because that guy just said it is, and whatever he says, it's a lie. You know, it's like, it's like watching Fox News, you know. But, but yeah, you know, you see the whole process of her stealing the money. Again, much better than the Swedish one. And just in general, I think this one really did do that. Get into the, what is, what is really being done here? What is the process, you know? And sometimes really, really swiftly getting really condensing, not, not cutting, but condensing, you know, making something fit in less than it seems like it should be able to without actually removing something. But yeah, I believe that's everything. I've reviewed other parts of this series, the links are in the description box. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.